Hi friends, welcome to another social studies lesson. So today we are going to be reading this book right here, How Animal Babies Stay Safe. So this hopefully will give you an idea of what is done so that animals um, and their offspring are safe. Many babies can't take care of themselves. They need an adult to help them stay safe. Animal parents care for their babies just as your parents care for you. They feed, clean, carry, and protect their young until the babies are old enough to do it for themselves. Some animal babies may need their parents for a few weeks. Some need them for a few years. Human babies need their parents the longest of all. There are babies who don't need their parents. When turtles, snails, snakes, and saltwater crabs hatch, they already know how to find food and escape from their enemies. This kind of knowledge is called instinct. Other types of animals are helpless when they are born. They cannot keep themselves warm or get their own food. Newborn puppies cannot see or walk. Baby mice are born with no fur. Their eyes and ears are closed. Eagle chicks cannot fly until they have full grown feathers. Some animal parents build homes to keep their young safe and warm. A nest is such a home. Birds, rats, rabbits, and squirrels all build nests. Wolves and bears raise their families in dens. Chipmunks tunnel into the earth to make burrows. Each burrow has a special room or nursery for the young. Animal parents have many ways to move their young safely from place to place. A leopard cub cannot run very fast. Its mother lifts it up by the loose skin on its neck and carries it in her mouth. Some babies, like young scorpions or anteaters, ride piggyback. Young shrews make a train behind their mother when they travel. They hold on to one another so none of them gets lost. There are animals like kangaroos that carry their babies in pouches. Inside the warm, cozy pocket, the baby kangaroo or joey can drink milk and is safe from danger. A mother alligator sometimes carries her hatchlings in her mouth. No animal would think of going there to snatch one of her young. Sometimes animal parents must leave their babies behind. These babies often have fur or feathers that blend in with their surroundings. It is harder for their enemies to find them. This is called camouflage. A fawn or baby deer has spots. Its mother leaves the fawn in a clump of plants where the spots help to hide it. Each kind of animal has a way to alert its young when danger is near. Ants, bees, and termites use smell. Fish use motion. Quick fin movements mean warning. When escape is not possible, animal parents will risk their own lives to protect their children. Hoofed animals like zebras fight off attackers by kicking and trampling. Tigers, wolves, and bears defend their babies with claws and teeth. But fighting is risky. Many animals try to trick their enemies instead. A mother raccoon dashes in front of a bobcat to get its attention and then scrambles up another tree. The bobcat chases after the mother and does not find her babies. Animals that live in groups work together to keep their young safe. Elephants keep their children in the middle of the herd. In this way, all the adults can keep enemies away. If all the grown-up animals leave to find food, the young must protect one another. Baby penguins will hover together to form a creche. By staying together, they are less likely to get cold, lost, or eaten.
all kinds of animal babies eventually grow up and must make their way in the world. When parents protect and care for their young, their children have a better chance of growing up to have their own children. This is nature's way of helping each kind of animal to survive. The end. So I hope that you saw some ways that animal babies are able to stay safe and also um, maybe have homes and food and uh, some things that their parents may teach them. So hopefully this will help you on your Foursquare assignment later on this week and also on your little packet that you're going to do on Friday where you're going to um, imagine that you're a scientist in a bird preserve and you are going to tell me or um, your teacher how you are going to provide a home for that bird that's injured, um, food for the injured bird while you're at the preserve, shelter or protection for the um, bird, and also what are things you could teach the bird that'll help it survive when it goes back out in the wild. So have a great rest of your day, my awesome scientists, and I will see you guys soon. Bye friends.